welcome back to Trimble Tech. If you don't know me, I'm Ian Trimble. I do Mac support, tech support, all about gaming. I thought today we would see if we could run Windows Server 2025 on the Mac. So I found some instructions. Let's see if this is going to be possible. I'm going to use the website uupdump.net to grab the Windows ISO. If successful, we will try to boot it up in both UTM and VMware Fusion for home lab purposes. Let's get started. So I'm going to choose your language and then um, let me just show you how I got here. You're going to go to this website and I'm going to go back and we want to go to Windows Server and choose 24H2. From here, we can choose Windows Server 2025. Choose your language and then click on Next. Now we're going to choose our edition of Windows. So I'm going to choose everything except for uh, Azure Data Center. So that's going to include Data Center, Core, Standard, and Standard Core. I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. And we want to um, make sure that we turn on .NET as well as the Windows Update Frameworks. Okay, And then next we're going to create our download package. So let's click on that. Say allow. And the download's going to begin. Since I'm on Mac OS, I'm going to need to download the installer script, and that's going to be located right here. I've got the tab pulled up. We, I'm going to be using um, Homebrew to get this installed. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and open up iTerm, my terminal of choice, and let me make a new tab. And let's go ahead and run the script. And press enter And if you get an error like this on your Mac, go ahead and run the fix, which could be located right here. Just to get around the open SSL issue. Fantastic. So again, let's just make sure we've got the we should have all of our tools here. Let's just run this one more time. Okay, great. So it's already been installed and we are good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and navigate to the file that we downloaded. So mine was located in my download slash 26100 folder. I'm going to run the command UUP download Mac OS. And all of the manifest and the files should be included in what we downloaded earlier. So let me run this. I'll say UUP download Mac OS dot SH. All right, if we get that permission to now, we want to um, add the permission to be able to run it, we'll do chmod uh, plus x and then our file uup download uh, macos.sh. All right, now we should be able to uh, run this uup download macos.sh. And it's going to begin the download process to make our ISO. It should take about uh, 20 minutes or so. so be prepared to wait. All 
All right, so the install, I mean, the uh, download took about 20 minutes. Like I said, and now it looks like it is doing the extraction. I uh, got a little message here. It says uh, the script does not and cannot support the integration of Windows updates. I think the only update we chose, we, uh, we, we didn't choose to do updates. I think all we did was um, to choose to install the uh, .NET. This is going pretty fast. Okay, so it's it's created the install WIM and it's adding a couple more files to the WIM. And I bet you once it gets into the WIM format, it's gonna start the uh, ISO conversion process. All right, so it looks like this is the process to convert it to the ISO. Let's do a LS and let's see. Okay, so about 20 minutes, 53 seconds, and then here is my ISO. All right, the next thing to do is we can go to VMware Fusion. We'll try both. Let's try VMware Fusion first, and we're going to create a new virtual machine. So let me close that one out, and let's go to New, and we're going to install from disk or file. It says uh, drag the ISO here to start installing. Okay, well, let's uh, find it. I believe it's in my downloads folder. All right, let's go ahead and continue. And we've got the option to do the easy install. And we're going to choose yet. Yeah, uh, we're going to choose the data center. That should give us our um, GUI. So let's see what this looks like. I'm going to go ahead and give it a, I won't give it a password for now. Let's make the home folder accessible and we'll say it can read and write. I'll give my account name, let's call it a Ian. And let's try to continue. Continue without a key. And let's see, let's give it some more RAM. Two gigs is, I don't think that is a, so we'll, we'll finish that, then we'll give it some more RAM. We'll go ahead and create it in my virtual machine folder. Looks like, okay, so uh, I did not like the easy install it. It did not like the x86. All right, well, let's try with UTM. We've got backups. All right, so let's go to create a new virtual machine and we're gonna to choose to emulate, and we're gonna choose Windows, and we're going to, again, uh, get my ISO image, and we'll choose to yeah, install the drivers and spice tools. Let's see, architecture, yeah, we'll keep it at x86-64, and I'll keep this the default. We'll give it a four gigs, and we'll give it uh, two CPU cores to start off. Let's give it three. We can always change it. 64 gigs for this uh, should be fine. And I'll make a share to the downloads. I like to do that. And yep, there is download. Let's continue. And I'll call it the Windows Server 2025 Data Center. And let's see, that looks good. Let's save it. And let's see what this does. We'll go ahead and wait. This is what Windows guest. I don't know what that is. If you do, if you do in the comments, let me know.
Okay, let's see what happens if I click on start. So I'm going to press a key. It looks good. It'd be cool if this would work. And then you can have your own little, um, you know, Windows domain home lab environment. All right, we'll choose English. Yep, looks good. US keyboard. All right, we're getting a few things ready. Now, okay, so this is interesting. Look at that. I don't have a product key, that's fine. Um, but look at this. I want to use Windows Server Pay As You Go. That is um, super, super interesting. I'm going to get a screenshot of that and uh, talk to Microsoft about that. Yeah, I'll get two screenshots. I'll say uh, Windows Pay As You Go. I wonder what that is all about. Yeah, I'm going to save that and just get one dedicated one of just that section there. That is interesting. All right, save that. Okay, let's continue. I don't have a product key. And we'll, I'll choose data center. Let's see if we can get the GUI here. Let's see full graphics. And then we've got the uh, server standard. Yeah, let's go ahead and just do server standard. I can always change the SKU later on. And again, this is just for a, for a demo. Okay, so it detected our hard drive. Let's click on next. And it should do the uh, formatting and the uh, everything for us. There it goes. All right, I will come back. So I, saw, I found some information about uh, the Windows Server 2025. And it was kind of quietly launched in the background. The date of this article was uh, November. So not too old, but it looks like, uh, you know, these are the two different versions, standard and data center. Um, but, and now it does offer this uh, pay-as-you-go licensing. And it says, the consumption-based licensing model is designed for standard edition users without unlimited virtualization rights who require temporary extra capacity. It enables them to run additional virtual machines using Windows Server 2025. To use this model, servers need to be connected to Microsoft's cloud through Azure Arc. The licensing and pricing structure is identical to running Windows Server in an Azure VM. It says the prices for both the standard and data center editions are the same and no cal is needed that's a that's a license however if the vm functions as a terminal server remote desktop cals must be acquired for the pay as you go option to be used the windows server must remain unactivated with any other license and this feature is exclusively available in the retail version of the operating system Let's see, switching between consumption-based and traditional licensing is simple. To end pay-as-you-go, users simply enter a product key for a perpetual license. Okay, when the VM is shut down or permanently deleted without disabling pay-as-you-go, billing may still continue. Well, that's wild. So basically, I can get charged if I forget to turn my Windows Server VM off. Okay. Let's see, Microsoft did not reveal pricing during the announcement. However, recommended prices for the two main editions can be found on the manufacturer's website. According to this blog and that listing, data centers priced at 6,000 
$771, whereas the standard edition cost $1,176. Both will let you set up to 16 cores. Okay. So there is a price increase, looks like uh, interesting. Okay, well, there we go. Windows Server is a service, even with your retail editions. Well, we're not using that, so we don't have to worry about it, but it's still interesting nonetheless. All right, so let's go ahead and bring it back. So we've gone ahead and restarted it. I would say this, if you're going to do this, make sure you give it a, a, you know, a, a lot of cores and RAM during the install. That'll greatly speed up the time. I'm going to go ahead and give it my super secret password. Hopefully I typed it in the same and we'll click on finish. All right, let's press the password. If you're on a Mac, press function, option, control, delete. If you want to actually use control, I'll delete at the sign in screen. Sign in, look at my keyboard, press enter. Password incorrect, let's try it again. All right, here we go. All right, so it looks like we got uh, the prompt to install the uh, guest tools. And if you've used virtualization, you know that these are going to help things with like screen resolution and copy and paste and screen size generally improve your user experience. So we'll let those tools go ahead and install. Right, so it, the tools are still being installed. I think we can maybe right click here and wait for it to respond. But I was, you know, curious. Um, let's see, you know, what the uh, CPU is being identified as. Let's see. Let's close this and say, yeah, I don't want to see that again. Close that. And let's take a look at the local server. And as you see, once the um, tools are being installed, the window get bigger automatically. Sounds work and just verify that as well. All right, and the install is finished. I'll go ahead and take click finished as well. So we can see right here, right? We've got what four gigs of RAM in this machine and it is identified as a Skylake processor. So it's not too old. We'll go ahead and uh, shut down, but congratulations. You now have Windows Server on your Mac. Thank you for watching Trimble Tech. If you like this video and you want to see more, hit that like button. It really helps me, helps the channel grow. If you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.